Welcome to another thrift flip challenge where I go thrifting and find items to flip and I'll do a few of them in this video and I'll show you how I get them changed over, upcycled, repurposed. And this thrift flip is going to have a theme. We're going to do patriotic, 4th of July, Memorial Day, Americana, and it's going to be on the primitive rustic side. So hang on, let's go. So the first item I find is right up near the front of the store and it is a pretty shutter. I like the color of it. It's not gonna work for the project that I'm gonna do today, but I normally would like it if it was a regular normal decor, but I have something that I have to kind of match up with it. So this is going to be our first project of this video. Okay, this shutter I picked up $4 and I really like it. I think it was just a decor piece. It's got hangers on the back. And I think I'm gonna leave it the long way. And I cleaned it, but I think I'm gonna use some of this milk paint that I have. This is Red Wagon milk paint. It's similar to what is on there, but not quite. The reason why I think I'm gonna do that is because I want to use this ribbon that I picked up at the Free Shack. And I don't think it quite matches, but I think it'll match with the red wagon color, the milk paint. And I have a little bit left over. So I'm going to see what I can get on here for that. It may be just one coat and maybe a couple coats. I don't know, it's nice and thick. So I'll see what I can do. Okay, so I actually cut it in half. So I cut the bottom off so it looks exactly the same as this one, just that burgundy color instead of the red. So what I'm gonna do is just paint the sides and give the top another coat and then we can decorate this. I cut it in half because it was a little bit bowed, like this way, and I didn't think it would lay flat on the wall and I just didn't think it would look good. So it's a little less noticeable being smaller. Okay, while we're waiting on that to dry, I'm gonna take this star ornament and I have this material star material just put that over there and um i'm gonna see if this is probably not big enough to fit on my star okay i should really tea stain this but I think what I'm gonna do is use my spray, my distressing spray, and I'm just gonna spray it. Let's see if we can get it to darken those stars up. I just don't want the white stars to be so bright. because it's gonna go over the top of this material. So can you see how stained that white is? So I want that to, to match. It's not gonna match as well with the white stars, but where I've tea stained it, 
or coffee, actually, it's more coffee than tea. Just darken that, those up a little bit so they'll match a little bit better. And then I'll just warm it, dry it with my heat gun. Okay, it's not completely dry, but I'm gonna get it wet with this Mod Podge anyway. So we're just gonna coat the top of, I flipped my ornament over. I mean, it doesn't matter either way, but I didn't want the red showing through on my stars. It might not, but. Okay. Just adding Mod Podge over the top. Seal it down. Especially those extra pieces that I added on. And then I'll go back once it's dried a little bit and and cut off the excess so you can actually see the star. Okay, instead of cutting it off, I'm folding it over. So I cut my corners, just put a little slit in each corner. And then I'm taking my hot glue just going down the side edge and in the back so it gets a good hold. I just think it looks better wrapped around. Covers up that white edge a little bit. Gives it a more finished look. And that's why you cut those little corners and that way it folds over a lot easier. You don't get a lot of resistance. Okay, so I have some of this vine garland. It just comes in a roll, I think. Oh gosh, I don't remember where I got this from. It's a Darcy, Darcy brand. Is it, um, oh, who sells that? Hobby Lobby probably you could get it. I'm sure Amazon you could get it. Um, factorydirect.com I think is where I actually got it. I think they had a deal buy one get one or something like that and so I want to take two turns of this if that makes any sense so it's a nice full one and I'm going to cut, I think my scissors will do it. Maybe. Oh, it does have wire wrapped around it. That's probably why I won't cut that piece. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take my floral wire, I mean you could use whatever you wanted, and I'm going to get these ends to stay together just by twisting them. So that's wired. I may do, I'm gonna do down here too. I did grab a piece of twine in case you could see it, could tie it around it, so. Or you could use twine, whatever you wanted. If you wanted to shape this, you'd wanna get it wet first. Another wire 
are sticking out. There we go. So what I want to do, this is going to be very simple, is take this. This is ribbon. I'm sure you could get this anywhere. It's wired. Um, I got this at the Free Shack. It was there and a while ago. And I grabbed it because I knew that Memorial Day, 4th of July, you know, all the patriotic things going on. And I just wanted to keep it for this special occasion or a special occasion. Okay, so I just flopped that over to the side, made my tails a little long, and I'm just gonna tie, I'm gonna turn it this way. Put a little tie in it. Probably a knot would be best. I have a little bit hanging down. And then you can cut these however you want. I don't know, I guess I'll do it this way. that so that's fuller very simple very Americana primitive rustic um, let me get a nail and we'll get that hung up on there Onward we go to see what else we can find. I noticed this cute little setup here. They made a little area. It, it looks really cute. I don't think I've ever seen Goodwill do this before, but I thought this looked a cute little area. And I was just checking it all out. And it's so funny because I have been looking for a holder for my rolling pins. I've been collecting rolling pins and I need to get them done up and be able to put in my booth, whether it might be my new booth or wherever in one of my booths. And uh, there's one sitting right there on the shelf that I could have grabbed and I didn't even give it a look. And that was in the back of my mind. I knew, but for some reason I didn't see that. I saw these, they're so pretty. The yellow is so bright. They were very springy, bright, summery. And I just thought it was a cute little little area right there. But why didn't I pick up that wine rack that I could have used for my rolling pins? It's so funny the things that you see and you don't see um, when you're out thrifting. So I'm just browsing through the metals section. I, I thought this clock was really cool, but it is missing some jewels. I don't know, like three or four of them. And I wasn't quite sure where I was going to get new ones to match or if I had to pop them all out and get them all to match. So I was, I kind of skipped on the, on that, but I thought it was kind of neat. I like this organizer basket, but I think they wanted quite a bit for it. So I skipped that. And the, I guess I was into wire baskets today because I picked this one up and then I was like, nah, I don't really want that. But I saw the plate underneath that I really kind of liked, and I've had an idea in my head of something that I wanted to do for a while. So this is going to be my next project. Okay, I'm gonna do over this platter. It's a nice, heavy, heavy platter. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this off. 
But the first thing that I want to do is make some milk paint because I don't have any reds or any. I do have a little bit of burgundy left, but really not enough, I don't think, to do what I want to do. This is a sample of Sweet Pickens milk paint, uh, Red Wagon. So it says mix equal parts powder to water. So I put two tablespoons of warm water in here. I think that'll be enough. I haven't worked with milk paint enough to know, but if I have extra, I can use it on something. And if I have not enough, I guess I'll have to make up more. That might be all I have left in here. So there's one. Let's see if we can do it this way. I guess that's, that's basically what I have left in this little sample. This is a two ounce sample size. I got this from, uh, where did I get this? J. Mary Vintage. So you wanna mix that up and then the best that you can and then let it sit and kind of thicken up a little bit. You wanna get as many of the uh, pieces those little chunks mixed in as you can. This thing and thickening up. I'm gonna take this outside and cover it with my matte clear sealer because this is very shiny and I want that milk paint to stick to this really well. So I'm gonna just put this on so that it will stick to it. Gets that, it kind of knocks that shininess down. It doesn't kinda, it actually does knock the shininess down quite a bit. My milk paint is still thickening, but I did spray this and it's just about dry. It's still drying, but you can tell it's a lot duller after I sprayed the Rust-Oleum Clear, Matte Clear on there, just to dull it down. And that way I think the paint will stick to it a little better. So I printed this out from Honey Bee Printables and I will have a link to her Etsy shop. That's where I got this. Uh, down in the description. So you wanna go over and check out her printables. They are absolutely beautiful. And I am going to add this to the middle. I'm gonna to try to get it to fit the best that I can here. So it's been about 10 minutes. I can't wait any longer because I want to get this done. This is going to be a very rustic piece. So I think this color paint is going to work really well. I'm just going to do the outside, just this metal part. The whole inside is going to be covered. Hit it with the heat gun. Second coat, I did get some chipping. That'll chip if I want it to right there. I got some crackling up above. See little dry spots. There's a few over here. There we go. I think I'm going to go one more coat and see if I can get a little bit more. And um, and we'll see what happens after that. Oh yeah, I got some nice chipping crackling there. Okay, third coat, we got a lot of chipping. A lot of places that wanna come off. So we'll let that, I'm gonna hit that a little bit more with the heat gun, let it dry a little bit more before I try and take any pieces off. But can you see, that's gonna be like huge. So the more layers you put on your milk paint, that's what's gonna happen. 
And I think I'll probably touch that up with, um, I want some of the metal maybe to show, but not all of it. So I'll probably touch it up with black rub and buff, just kind of fill it in in spots. I could have sprayed this black underneath. So then when this did chip off, it would have been black, but I don't mind having some of the shiny come through. So you see all the chips. Okay, and then I cut a bunch of my music notes that I have, and I'm going to put them underneath this paper, and that way it's covering up the brown. I don't have to paint it. It gives it a nice look. I like the music notes underneath my paper, you know, whatever I'm working with a lot of the times, and I think it's fitting. So... What I'm gonna do is Mod Podge this down. Now it doesn't really need to, to cover up the whole middle, but the lighter color may make this pop a little bit. So I am going to cover the whole thing. And I just cut, just cut rounded edges, ripped it a little bit here and there. I just want to make sure all the edges are down. And then put a nice coat of Mod Podge over the top. That way we know it's stuck down really well. I'm just going to add a little extra Mod Podge and then add my beautiful sunflowers and flag and the USA. Make sure it's on there. Well, oh, I was going to touch up those edges with to darken up those edges. I'll have to do that once it gets down. I'm going to age it anyways. Okay, now we're going to go in with my Tim Holtz dis Distressing Spray. And I'm going to just give it a little shot here somewhere and see what it looks like. This is the antique linen. Well, actually, this might be my coffee vanilla mixture. I might, I think I ran out. I lost this. I couldn't find it. And um, I finally found it when I moved some stuff around. It fell behind a cabinet. And so I, uh, I think that actually is my, my um, like grunge mixture. It's like co instant coffee and vanilla, uh, all different kinds of stuff in there. So let's see what we got here. It's a little bit more yellow, which is good. We'll just put that on. I want the paper to look old, not new. Okay, well, it definitely yellowed up the paper a little bit. Um, I think I want it to look a little more aged than that. But I'm gonna go with the old standby, little antique wax. See how much of a distress I can get with that. Yeah, darkens up those edges a little bit. I like that. Good. We're just going to wing it. See what happens. I may be crying because it just doesn't come out the way I want. Just 
still getting loose pieces off. I'm going to have to seal this guy. Oh, no. Definitely not crying. I think that looks really good. All right. So what I was going to do is take a little black and put that on a little bit on some of these shiny spots so it makes it look like it's kind of had black paint on it but it came off paint at the back black Now as we move along the metal aisle, I did pick up this brass candle holder. It was beautiful shape. I love the look of it. And I knew that I had a globe at home. So I'm not gonna show you right now. I just clean up the globe that I have, take the tag off the candle holder. And I'll show you later on in some of the pictures that you will see how I kind of styled it and put it in with, it, it fits right in with the theme of this whole video. So uh, we're just going to walk around and keep looking and see what else we can find. And I get lots of ideas, but some of the prices are just out of this world uh, that they're asking. And I just can't, you know, always pick things up like that. So I'm just going to keep browsing along and eventually we'll end up in the wood section and you can see what I pick up there. I don't do all of the flips today in this video of the things that I picked up, but I will later on. I'm sure I will show you what I do with those. It seemed like there was kind of slim pickings here in the wood department. Sometimes it's loaded right full, and then other times there isn't really much to find. So I had to dig around a little bit. I did like this tray, and it said as is, and I was like, hmm, I wonder what they mean. But it, I think it's just because it's missing the, the nails on a couple of those little metal brackets on the side. And they marked it down to $2. I couldn't believe that. So... I can put those little nails in no problem and for two dollars that's going in the cart. We're not going to do anything with that today. I don't even know if I will do any upcycling with that. Uh, I think I might just put the nails in and call it good. I love this little holder here. I thought this was so cute and I even like the flower and the design on the front. So all I did with that was bring it home, clean it up, and it's already in my booth to see if it'll sell without doing anything to it. If it doesn't sell after a while, I can always bring it home and do something with it. I also like this wooden bowl. I try to pick these up anytime that I can find them. I want to do a bunch of them over and put them in a bowl rack, like a primitive bowl rack. And they're coming kind of few and hard, uh, far between and I don't see them that often, but um, so I like to pick them up when I can. So I really like that flag holder, but I did not grab it at first. I think I was just kind of thinking about it. But as I got looking around, I did go back to it and snag it up. And that'll be our next project. So this is the farmhand farmhand stamp it's called from iod and i'm just i took the backing off and i'm just sanding the backs a little bit make sure i get it all down there and then i'm going to wipe it off and i think on here 
this was four dollars i like this part on here and all the i just i like it this is a branch and it's really cute so i think the only thing that i want to do is distress it a little bit more around the edges Find those edges. It's got kind of a, a bumpy edge to it. I don't know if you can see, but it. I was going to do 1776 just down on the corner here, but I don't have numbers. All I have are letters. I thought this was a, a double pack of letters and numbers, and I could, I guess, make the one and the Z could be a seven, a seven, and then I could. Um, use something for the six but I think what I'm going to do instead is do let freedom ring so I'm taking the cover that goes over you know that you put on the other side of this to cover it up man I am getting stuff everywhere okay so now I'm going to set up how I think I want it to look so I'm going to start peeling these off so I'm going to do let freedom ring Okay, my stamp pad from scrapbooking.com. I'll put a link down in the description. We're just gonna ink this baby up. good ta-da looks good okay then we just want to do the e you think i'm going to freehand that we'll see if i can screw the whole thing up i'm gonna go a little bit higher right about there It's moving. There we go. It did move a little bit, but it's okay. So there's freedom. So I'm sure we've all done this after thrifting. We think back about the different things that we've seen and we say, geez, I really wish I picked that certain something up. Those rose dishes that were on the bottom shelf when I just picked this one up, I kind of wish I'd gotten those. Those were beautiful dishes. I don't really know if they were worth anything. Uh, I didn't really look them up. I just thought they were beautiful. These yellow amber dishes... This one was beautiful, and I thought it would look great in a lot of my, my black decor. Uh, it would make things really pop, but I didn't pick them up, and I probably should have, but I didn't. I really like this little crate. It wasn't a real big deal, but I really should have picked that up as well. And so many more things, of course, that I probably missed. We all have those shoulda, coulda, woulda moments, I guess. I hope you enjoyed this thrift flipping challenge 
and it seems like you guys really like these kind of videos so I'm going to try and do them from time to time. I had some time to go thrifting so hey might as well do it. It actually gets a lot of the projects done quickly and I'm able to get them out of the house and into my booth. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check out this next video on your screen. I know you're going to like it.